Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program with Nitro. Well, now that the uh, new update is out, I actually wanted to restart my career that I had started in the past two videos. So I'm actually going to start a new one right now uh, in career mode and share with you guys just a lot of the new information and cool stuff that I found out so far. So, going along with our sandbox career, I'm going to name this one ODST as well. Uh-oh, can't do that. <laughs> Alright. Well, that's fine. RTS, and boom. There we go. Alright, so now that we have a new, new uh, career mode, I actually wanted to share with you guys uh, some of the stuff that I figured out here. Um, there's actually a lot to do on Kerbin, if you guys haven't uh, already explored Kerbin itself, uh, go go ahead and try it. Uh, one of the things that I think I shared in the last video is you can actually launch a pod right on the landing pad over here, or launch pad, my bad. And you can do science missions on Kerbin itself without actually having to go anywhere yet. So if you just go for a simple EVA, you can take a surface sample, and that gets you science for taking a surface sample of the launch pad, and you can keep that data, and then you can also do an EVA report right here. Uh, EVA report from launch pad and keep that data. Now, if you go back to the uh, pod, it actually stores all of that data inside your pod once you're back in there, and it tells you that in green text up here on the top left. Uh, and then you can just get out again if he falls on his face and wants to get up. Eh, he doesn't. Come on, Jeb. Get up. There you go. All right, and then so we can... Go ahead and just time warp ahead here. And I haven't taken a sample of the concrete down here yet, so that is going to be the next task. I imagine it's different than uh, the launch pad, hopefully. Or asphalt, whatever you want to call this. I don't care. It's road. So here we go. Take surface sample of this from Kerbal Space Center. Interesting, interesting. Uh, we don't need to do another EVA report, but we do need to bring the sample back to the pod. And then I'm just going to have him walk out here on the grass and take a sample of the ground, and that'll get us our initial starting uh, science. But then there's also some other interesting science that we can do just around the Space Center itself. And I don't know if that is flickering out there in the distance. That's interesting. Take it out of time warp. Store that in the pod, and then we can go back outside again. And just time warp out to the grass. Um, that's a bit far. Do, 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 do. Here we go. I actually did figure out that it does take a little while before you actually get a chance to start building proper space planes. You can build some very primitive uh, space planes with rocket engines, although they aren't going to fly very far because you don't have the fuel efficiency that you do of air intake engines. But it is a cool thing that you can do. I guess that might be the the exact same sample is taking it over here, but that's okay. At least now we know we have conducted science. <laughs> if you want to call taking samples of your own world science, I guess it is because, uh, you know, scientists look to get an understanding of our own world as much as we do for getting an understanding of space. So it makes sense. It's not really uh, cheating. If you're taking samples from Kerbin, it's actually something that you should do. Uh, yeah. So whenever you get that warning message that says dump experiments, that just means that you're trying to store a duplicate of data that you already have stored in your pod. And we don't need to do that. And now we can actually get a crew report right here from the launch pad. Not worth very much, uh, but we do have that data there. All right. 
So now, let's go back to the Space Center and recover the pod. Which is still on the launch pad, and we can recover that and we get 21 science, which is actually pretty good to start out with. Because that'll get you your starting pieces on your tech tree here. So once you go into the Research and Development Center, you can research that for 5. And then we can also get this one down here for 15, which is very important because this has a lot of the uh, different parts that we're going to use. And you kind of want to get all of these first two uh, large tiers built up before you start worrying about what to dump your science points into. Alright, now that we have that, we are going to launch a little rocket and take it off uh, to a different location, so let's go ahead and put that on there, and these, some landing legs wouldn't hurt. So that's our initial craft, now we have our Strut. So this will help you get your initial uh, decoupler as well, which is also very useful. It's kind of hard to get anywhere without this initial uh, decoupler. Uh, hopefully this will make things a little bit easier for you guys by watching this. <laughs> So, four plus one, decouple, fire rocket, activate parachute. The pod the pod stage is really weird. It, in my opinion, it shouldn't be there because it doesn't actually do anything. It's kind of misleading to have that as an actual stage. I guess it's kind of like a default or control stage to let you know that there is, you know, just something there. Um, let's see, did we get our science? Yes, we have our mystery goo. So we can go ahead and get that. Right there like that. So, perfect. Um, what else, what else? I guess a couple extra parachutes would not hurt at all. And just like that. And we don't have any aerodynamics yet. We don't need to transmit any data because we're going to be recovering all of our aircraft, our spacecraft, and this is good to go. So we're going to call this, uh, I don't know, the Explorer. All right. All right, so what are we going to explore? We are going to explore those mountains back there behind Kerbin. So uh, it's a little wobbly on the launch pad, but we should be fine. Actually, just gonna fire. Well, I'll fire them all at the same time. Hopefully, it doesn't overheat.
All right. So we got a little bit of science data there. We got our goo sample, and you can reset these and reuse them and gather new data. So that's a good thing to uh, remember. don't want to land on an incline if I can help it. That's never a good thing. We'll see what happens here. If I can just... I wanted to just try to angle it. <laughs> it's just not going to give it to me. That's alright. It's about as flat as I can get it here. Jub's alive, that's all that matters, right? Alright, uh, oh boy. Alright, good. <laughs> At least we're on the mountains. So now we can take a surface sample of the mountains, and it says up there we actually have it. Uh, cool. So we got that EVA report from the mountains, so that's something. Oh boy, the pod is coming after us. Um, pretty. Oh, is it destroyed? Yeah, it's just destroyed. Uh, that's okay. We have a sample of the mountains, and that's all we need. So now we can go back to the space center and launch a new mission out to the grasslands, and just go ahead and grab that.
All right, good. So we actually have 21 science now, just off of that short little mission. Uh, before I unlock anything else, I'm just going to go ahead and do another mission. So, same craft, same idea. I'm just going to head out in that general direction and try to get some grassland samples. So, here we go. I know this seems kind of uh, pointless and dumb to do, but actually you, you can get a lot of science values just exploring the area around the Kribble Space Center. Uh, another thing that I want to do real quick here is actually just go to the beach and also go in the water. Uh, if you do a water landing, you can collect samples of Kribble's water and uh, the beach sand as well, and you get science values off of that. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, so not, not really a whole lot of data there, but that's okay. It's not the objective of that one. Uh-oh. What is this? Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> uh, what is going on? Well, that's not good. <laughs> um, we have a critical failure. <laughs> uh, RTS. See what happens here. That's a weird glitch. Oh, yeah. It is completely corrupted. Well, that sucks. Ah, <laughs> oh, I guess we'll just restart it here. Up. 
We have found a bug. I guess the game just uh, kind of crashed there, so I'm going to go ahead and restart it and submit a bug report. This is, this is a little weird, <laughs> but uh, see you guys when I resume it. All right, well we're back. I closed off uh, Kerbal Space Program and then deleted the save file that I was running there and then uh, started a new game and that seems to have fixed it. Uh, that's a really weird glitch there. Jeb was just uh, getting out of his spacecraft and jumped off and something weird happened. I don't know if he fell through the world or if the camera fell through the world or something uh, happened, but uh, that was not good. <laughs> Only happened on Kerbin though, so I don't know. But. Uh, now that we're back here at the Space Center, I'm just going to go ahead and redo everything that I already did. And I'll get back to you guys after we have our grassland sample. Um, I'm just going to do a, uh, a beach and ocean sample. And when I do that one, I'll bring all of you guys back into recording for that. Alright, well here we are at the Kerbin Beach, just next to the Space Center, so I'm going to grab a uh, sand sample and a water sample from the ocean. And that will give us a lot more science, and I still need to do another mission over to the mountains and grab that data, and then after I do uh, all this, I'm going to bring you guys uh, back in and we'll actually do some real space work and... Uh, get a craft up into orbit around Kerbin and show you guys all the cool uh, different bits of sciences that I found uh, around Kerbin that you can explore. And then after that, uh, hopefully in this episode, but maybe in a future episode, I'll do another mission to the moon that'll be a successful mission. I want to do a orbit of the moon first and grab all that nice data, and then we'll do an actual moon landing. Alright, so let's observe the goo. Hmm. Interesting data. That's not worth much. And EVA. All right, so now we have that data. And we can go back to the Space Center. So you can quickly see just how much uh, all this data just around the Kerbin Space Center is worth. And I've already unlocked a couple of things with it. And there we go, we already have our entire second tier of technologies unlocked just by exploring around the Kerbin Space Center itself. We haven't even gone to space yet, and we already have all of the science data. So. You can very easily acquire a lot of uh, quick and easy science just at the Space Center itself. You don't even have to go out into space. Uh, so to go into the water, I'm just going to use this little pod right here, because we don't need anything special for that. And uh, we got our goo, so let's launch it.
<laughs> Great. We have Mystery Goo now in Kerbin's Ocean. <laughs> Probably not the best thing. Poof. <laughs> All right, now we can take a sample of the water, and that's actually worth a lot. 12 science value right there. Uh, so that's very valuable. And EVA report of the water, and now we have all that wonderful data. Awesome. All right, so we need 45 for the next tier. Not quite there yet, but that's okay. We are going to space. Um, actually, wait, we're not going to space yet. Uh, I'm gonna pause it and I have to redo that mission out to the mountains real quick and then uh, get all that nice science data and then we can do our mission to space. So I'll bring you guys back in after I go ahead and go do that. Alright, so I actually just wanted to bring you guys in real quick to show you this recording of uh, our new mountain landing. This is much better than the first attempt that uh, I launched because now we're not landing on such a sharp incline. So this will actually be a much softer landing and we should be able to get new and better data. So let's just go ahead and see what happens here with that. There we go. And mystery goo hasn't changed. That's to be expected. All right. So now we have that data. So we actually got a lot of science off of that too, which is awesome. So we quickly gained uh, so much science already. Um, really don't need anything fancy yet. This will further our science ability. So I'm just going to go ahead and research that right now. And then these are all 90 and we don't need any of that yet. All right. So this is the craft I used for that, but we're not going to use this anymore. Alright, we need a spacecraft. That's actually going to go all the way up into space and land. Uh, we're going to have to do this a couple of times to gain the maximum amount of science data that we can get from it.
Alright, this, uh, well. Here you can add a couple more boosters. So this should get us up into space without any problem. There we go. All right.
perfect. That's a really good orbit, and we have plenty of fuel for re-entry. This is really lightweight craft, so now we can observe our goo. Awesome. So keep that data. So just gathering our EVA reports while we have them. And keep in mind this is from a low carbon orbit. As you uh, do a higher altitude orbit um, around carbon, you'll actually get a much different result than uh, a low altitude orbit around carbon. So uh, let's see. Once we come back around to our periapsis, I'm going to grow our apolapsis out more. And then you guys will see the effect that that truly has. Uh, on the dark side of the planet, you're not going to be able to see our science mission, but uh, I am going to do another EVA over this side of the planet and see what we get. Hopefully we get mountains. Right here would be nice. All right, so we've got grasslands. So as you can see, uh, depending on where you are over Kerbin, you actually get different EVA uh, report results. And that's important. Yeah. Come on, Jeb. Whoa. Where are you going, Jeb? Go back. Good. Um, I know you guys can't uh, see that. I can barely see it. Um, we may get a mountain encounter over here, so I'm going to try for that. Urban Highlands, so that's something at least. It's a new EVA report. Uh, let's see, might get mountains over here, hopefully. <laughs> Just gotta keep at it, see what happens. Highlands. Darn. Let's see what happens if we get over uh, these smaller mountains over here. Still highlands. It's unfortunate. It is uh, pretty hard actually to get mountains. It doesn't usually want to give it to you. I 
I guess if I went over this area right here, it would definitely give it to me. But, uh, I'm not gonna do that. Let's see what happens here. I guess I have to be the white capped mountains in order for it to register. Turban Deserts, so we'll keep that data. Come on, Jeb. Get in there. Ah, gotcha. Alright. Um, what else? Well, actually, because we know that there's mountains behind the Kerbal Space Center and it does register those as mountains, I'm going to actually try and see if it will give me the EVA report here. Let's see what happens. Urban Highlands still. Grasslands. I don't know if I had grasslands yet. Come on. already had something there. Oh, that is unfortunate. Um, I mean, for Crimini, these are mountains. Oh yeah, that's right. Gotta grow our Apolapsis out while we're here. should do it. And now, we go over there, we should get some new things happen. Alright. So now, we orient towards the sun. Now we observe our mystery goo. Yeah, see? So now we have a uh, high over Kerbin. Goo feels right at home. So we'll keep that data. And now we'll also look at the materials bay. And now we have a high radiation environment. So we gotta keep that data too. So now we have new data from the high radiation environment. And let's just go ahead and do an EVA while we can. Space high over Kerbin. So we still got the same report. Now we board. All right. So let's see. As we come in for landing, I'm going to put her down in the desert, and that'll give us some uh, even more interesting science data that we don't have yet. All right. So retrograde is this way, and now we can return back down to Kerbin.
Well, this may end badly, <laughs> but we'll find out. We got new data. Looks like we're going to go down the water next to the desert. Not in the desert, but that's fine. We'll get new data from our material bay while it's in the water, so that'll be interesting. I haven't done that one yet. So we are getting some uh, duplicate data samples there from the materials bay, but I know for a fact they'll be different once it's in the water. Right, so that's good enough. And now we can go back to the Space Center and gather all this new data. And basically you just keep doing this and if you do enough missions around Kerbin, you can get a bunch of different uh, data samples. Look at that, 85 science from that mission alone and we didn't even do everything around Kerbin. Uh, we landed in the water. Uh, if you expose those samples to desert conditions, uh, mountain conditions, and arctic conditions, you'll get a whole new set of data samples, so I have to do that as well. And I uh, hope you guys found uh, this to be pretty educational for uh, ways that you can get a lot of science very quickly. So now back here at our research and development lab, we have a bunch of new things that we can try. I uh, don't really need some of the stuff yet. We have 85 science, so that stability and answer is kind of tempting, however. Um, yeah, but I need duct tape, so... Let's go ahead and get that, and then the next one can be that one. 
And once you start getting into this larger tier here where you have all these other options, this is where you get your fuel lines right here. So this is one of the more valuable ones that you can get right here is that fuel systems. Uh, but I'm going to end the episode here and then pick up right where I left off right here in the next episode. And we can do another uh, orbital mission around Kerbin and land uh, in the desert and then get our samples the right way. <laughs> And we can get a whole new set of data that way, and we can also launch another mission and get the mountains over Kerbin data, land on the mountains, maybe. And then we can also do the polar ice caps. And once we have all that data, then we finally have all the data that I know about uh, at this point.